black unicorn. What is a black unicorn? Black unicorn. Black unicorn. Black unicorn. Black unicorn. All right. Yo, Robin. Okay, yeah, welcome to uh, the spot, Robin. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I am so happy like to have you here. Like me and you have a long friendship. Um, and okay. I don't even know if we ever thought okay. one day we would be sitting here even doing this. You and another, we're in two different countries having this type of interview. About. Yeah, being that we met in LA. <laughs> exactly, the, the city of dreams. And we have some dreams. <laughs> yes, we do. We have some dreams. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Some crazy dreams, some amazing dreams, and dreams yeah. that are attainable. Actually, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right in, friend, because I want um, you know, I want to use this time. I want people to understand your magic, who you are, why I consider you a black unicorn, because I'm sure. All y'all who get to see this is going to consider her a uh, black unicorn after you watch this um, this, this interview. So um, let's just jump right in. So I, I usually like let people introduce themselves, tell them, tell your name. Um, yeah, let's start with your name. And I would like to know what your pronouns are um, and how do you how do you identify? My name is Robin Hazlett. I am she. Her, and I identify with many different titles. One as a way shower, a light worker, tarot reader, um, spiritual counselor, um, and as Prince would say, a sexy motherfucker. <laughs> it's okay. Right. I wish we had time to go into our, our, our Prince conversation. Y'all, we both have stories right. about Prince. Um, personal stories about Prince that maybe we'll share one day along the line, but to put it lightly, he's been a guide to us both in some form or another. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. He's, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Absolutely. What did you, what did you I know he's just, no, he's just very present lately for both of us. So, and I'm just enjoying getting his counsel. Mm, mm. Um, in your uh, identification, you said like a, a, a light worker. Uh, what else did you say? Truth. What was the way other? shower? A way shower. A way shower. Showing people the way. Hence my uh, Hayoka way, um, and also being a soul reader, soul tarot reader. Mm. My tarot cards speak to your soul and the evolution of your soul and what you need, the steps you need to take to complete your journey. Because so many people get caught up in pleasing other people or, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Mm. They don't realize that your incarnation is here to remember your divinity. And I am one to help people with that. Now, um, you know, this, this series is going to reach a lot of people, but um, I find that Black people are, when, we, when you say like tarot cards or you say like spiritual divinity, um, not all Black people, I'm not, gonna, so I don't want to hear no shit, y'all, but I'm saying <laughs> some of us, some of us um, really have a negative view on uh, like tarot reading and people that, uh, truth seers, you know, what would you tell people that, um, what would you tell people that don't quite understand what it is that you do? Like, how do you explain it to them? Our people, specifically. I'm sorry? Our, our people, you know, like, you know. Our people? Yeah. Which is okay. everybody, but, which so is basic everybody, but, you know. But yeah, there is a stigma attached to it for sure. And a lot of it is negative. I do have a lot of people that I read for that are fearful because they don't want to know what's happening. But basically tarot cards are just a divination tool to talk to God, to source, to Jesus, whatever your deity is, Buddha. Um, it's just a way to get answers for yourself as opposed to just 
throwing caution to the wind and walking out and not realizing that you could, there's other steps that you should have taken before you stepped out. Um, and I'm here to help with those steps. A lot of people don't understand why so-and-so has all the money and the fame and, and the fortune, and then they did the same thing. They don't have it. It's because there's a soul journey that we're all on. And if we are all trying to be the do, be and do the same thing, it's a boring world. So we all have different levels of soul. And I, I also dive into that with birth charts and life numbers as well. So it goes tandem with tarot. It's just helping you. It's a guide. It's a tool. Um, it's not what people think black magic, work of the devil, work of the Satan. I've been called the spawn of Satan. <laughs> I've had people want to beat my ass because I gave them tarot, read them tarot cards that they weren't happy with because they wanted a certain answer, but the answer was very clear in the cards. Mm. So um, it's just really getting in touch with who you are and remembering your divinity and remembering that you are a divine soul. We are all a part of God. God is in all of us. We all have this ability. And I just want to help awaken people to understand that it's, yeah, I it comes to me a lot easier because I've done this multiple lifetimes, but everyone can do it if you learn your specific goal or sorry, your specific soul journey. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's journey is the same. Mm -hmm. what, what is your um, motivation to do this like what motivates you to to, to want to be uh, available for us in this way it is what i have been told i was supposed to do ever since i was a little girl i would just know things about people um i would have friends when i was like maybe six seven eight years old and i would know intuitively know that they were in an abusive household like their parents were abusing them i didn't know how i knew it um, just things would come to me. And I always felt like I was being watched when I was a little girl. I always felt like somebody was talking to me and feeding me information about everybody that I met. And I was like, how do I know this? And it ended up being true. So I realized that it was my spirit guides, angels, and my, my great grandmother who has always been there, who has saved me from multiple situations where I almost died. So, um, yeah, it's it's just something that either you're born with and you you learn to harness it or you can learn how to harness it. And that's why light workers and way showers are here because everybody has the capability to do what I do. It's just, you have to practice at it. And if you're comfortable with it and if you fear it, then you're only going to get negativity because of course, fear begets fear. Yeah. You attract that so mm. it's funny you say that um because i i've always uh also feel like you know i as a creative i've always felt like i've had voices inside my head and i just think i was crazy but um just in my growing up i've heard over and over about like times that before pre pre-slavery how um our ancestors we're very in tune with, you know, ancestors and spirit and things like that. And that through slavery, you know, a lot of that was stopped and uh, because they were more wiped interested. out. Yeah, it was wiped out and controlling, you know, our mind or whatever. Um, so it's really, you know, it's it's cool to see um, a, a black woman. So I just want to foster your intuition because we all have it. We all are born with that still small voice. And I was lucky enough to have a mother that fostered that. And she, she sparked my journey. Even though I was already getting messages, she fed that. She didn't say that I was crazy. She said, I get those messages too. Or I feel, you know, certain things about certain people too as well. And she gave me books and I just started reading and she took me to um, silent, not silent unity, but unity church which is non-denominational mm -hmm. i went to a catholic school i was in a catholic school when i had my 
aha moment while I was taking communion, I realized ah, mm, mm, religion is not for me. I was in, I think, the third, maybe fourth grade mm. when I realized that because I went to a Methodist church. My family has a church in upstate New York, which was actually used for the Underground Railroad. And when I was in that church, I would feel pain. I would cry. I didn't know why. I didn't realize I was feeling the pain of our ancestors. Hmm. You know? I've and then I went to a Catholic school. I've never been, but I've heard when people go to places like Ghana uh, to the door of no return, that people have a, that type of experience where they start crying and they feel the weight of it. Yeah, I've heard that before. You feel it. That church, I mean, it's still standing. The church is over a hundred something years old. And it was the very last um, stop for the slaves until they were free because it was upstate New York. And I would just feel their pain. And I thought, mom, I don't want to come here anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I'm going to Catholic school throughout the week. So I'm getting taught two different religions. And I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> I was like no, y'all are, you know, fucking my head up right now. Right. So at that right. point, I realized I have to find my own way because I, I was getting these voices. I was getting um, confirmation on what I was feeling about certain people. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that there was a path there for me. And I just kept going down the path and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper and broader and broader to the point where I could pick up strangers information. I would hear what my neighbors were talking about. I'm like, oh, what is happening? So then I shut it down. So it does get overwhelming. Um, right. And it is scary for a lot of people because when you do open up that door, you're opening up to something that you weren't indoctrinated to know about. Right. You know what I mean? It's Jesus, it's God, and it's that's gospel. Nothing else exists. Everything else is evil not knocking anybody else's religion. This is my own personal view. But um, when you get to that point of hearing two different religions as a little girl, and you're trying to figure it out for yourself, you, you really kind of, you reach out and your ancestors will come to you if you're quiet enough and if you listen, and if you don't have that fear from what people, you know, what religion has taught you. And I, I don't mean to get on to religion, but yeah. you know, that that's my background, how I came to this this gift of reading tarot cards, because I had to figure it out. And and, and would you how long would you say it, it took you to develop to the point you're at now? How long did it was that process? Well, when I moved to LA in 1999, my roommate and I were bored. And we were just driving around Studio City and we came across um, a bookshop called The Psychic Eye. Have you seen it before <laughs> on Ventura? I feel like I have. I feel like I have seen that before. It's been there for ages. I think it's still there. So I, I, told I, never, you I never went in there, but I, I think I did. I think I did see it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, I think it's in Sherman Oaks on Ventura Boulevard. And we were just driving around. I said, we need to go in there. And we walked in and they just had a table of tarot cards and I was automatically drawn. It was like a, it was a pull. Mm. And this one deck of cards just kind of slid out on the table. And I was like, oh, I want these. And I've had these cards for 21 years. So in 99, that's when I decided to dive into my spirituality because that I was just called to it. It just, I follow my instincts because I'm an Aries and I'm very impulsive. <laughs> so if I get a feeling, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do it. So um, I started reading, practicing with a couple of friends and realized that it was something that really made me feel good. And it really helped my friends as well. And I never really read for strangers or yeah. nor did I read for the public. And I started reading for the public like what a, a year ago, but um, it took me 20 years to really foster the courage to put it out and read for people that I don't know. So my advice is when you get that 
still small boys talking to you about whether you should do this or do that or go left, go right, listen to your first instinct. And if it comes from a hurried place, then that's fear. But if it's a very small voice that says, turn left, that's your guides, that's your angels. And then you want to keep talking to that voice and you keep telling them, okay, I want a little bit more guidance and just meditation, meditation, five, 10 minutes a day. Cause I, I mean, I've got a monkey brain, literally my, I'm always thinking of stuff constantly and I'm always picking up other people's energy. So I don't know what's sometimes is mine and sometimes it's somebody else's. So when I meditate, it's very intentional. You set an intention to meditate and be peaceful and to connect with God, to connect with Jesus, to connect whatever deity you see fit. Mm. Mm. And I guarantee you, the doors will open. You'll get messages. Mm. You'll get um, messages in songs, <laughs> numbers, people just calling you out of the blue and saying, hey, I was thinking about you, blah, 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 blah. And you'll get a message. Just little synchronicities that happen. And don't disregard them as coincidences because on this planet, there are no coincidences. Mm. I've learned that. I've come to learn that. Mm. Uh, this next question is, 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 a, is a, a weird question, but I always, I always learn so much about people when I ask this. What, what is your favorite food? Okay, I'm a little complicated with food because I used to be a personal chef, private chef in LA. Oh, that's so right. You know, I, totally for, I forgot that. I forgot. So One you of can, my many jobs. <laughs> you fine. You can cook. Ain't you spiritual? <laughs> Thank you. Listen, I'm going to have to come out. I'm out. <laughs> But I love Mediterranean food, Italian food, and Korean barbecue. It's my three favorites. Mm. Mediterranean, Korean barbecue, and what was the other one? Italian. Italian. Oh, you just became my better friend. I love you. <laughs> oh my God, you just became my best. That that literally is the uh, the Korean barbecue and Italian is so yeah. Mm. If you guys haven't had Korean barbecue, yes. Do yourself a favor, favor, and go find one and go. Mm. And get yourself some bulgogi. That is the best beef you will ever have in your entire life. It's so delicious. And it's actually easy to make. So it's super crispy. Yeah. It's, it's they use rice powder, rice flour. Is that make it super crispy? Yes. That, and a little bit of baking soda. Yeah. Now see, this is why this question is important. What is what is one piece of work that uh You've, you've seen and been inspired by an artist uh, or a piece of art um, that you feel like people need to see before they check out? I'm not so much of an art girl, but I'm more of a book person. But yeah, it could be a book, it could be music, it could be anything. Yeah, well, music, we know, we all, we know. <laughs> right. Music, you can't live without print. But there's one book that my mother gave me when I first moved to LA because I had all these opportunities and I was so scared to pursue. She sent me a book that says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Because mm. okay. that's exactly what I did. And I, doors just open. I overcame a lot of fears and that book helped me. And I would suggest it to anybody that is, you know, has apprehension about moving to the next step in their life or wanting to to open that business or move to that country whatever you need to do feel the fear and do it anyway because that's what your your soul is urging you to do if you feel it that's a soul journey right there okay what would you say freedom is to you freedom to me is being able to live your truth be who you want and be free to live your soul's journey because most people are stepping on your neck all the fucking time excuse my language but seriously people want to step on your neck when you're feeling yourself when you're feeling you are full of possibilities somebody wants to pop your bubble 
freedom to me is living your soul journey 100 percent what's an affirmation that you want to leave, leave people with? what's something an affirmation or mantra that maybe you say to yourself have you heard before that you will leave with the people you know who are watching i am the divine flow of love and miracles even if you are in a bad mood just give yourself two minutes of saying that over and over again i guarantee you your energy will lift i am the divine flow of love and miracles